You have to walk a mile in somebody's shoes before you know who they are. Everybody's story is different. And I kind of felt like I should have died. We're their next door neighbor. We're their siblings with all the same challenges. To be in their boots is to try and somehow understand what it was like. This is my story. Hello, and welcome to a special Veterans Day edition of In Their Boots. On today's show, we're going to honor our nation's veterans by profiling some of these courageous men and women and highlighting some of their accomplishments since their return to supportive families and communities here at home. Now, to move on with our first story. Sergeant John Lujan suffered a severe spinal injury when his unit was hit by enemy fire in Iraq. This injury severely altered his life, but it hasn't stopped him from pursuing a passion that he's enjoyed since childhood. Here's his story. I checked into Camp Pendleton on January 6th, and three weeks later I was standing in Iraq. So I, I didn't really have time for it to sink in. You know, I checked in and my master gun says, don't unpack, Luhan. I was a platoon sergeant for my platoon and I had 33 Marines that were underneath me. For the first couple weeks, we were convoy security for logistical trains moving north in the back and in, into Iraq. The night that we breached was um, the opening night of the war and we went around most of the strong points through the desert to try to circumvent the enemy so that we could get ahead of the, the infantry so that when they caught up to us we could su resupply them with food, ammunition, water, medical supplies and all, all those sorts. I was the only casualty in our platoon. The convoy took fire from the front and the driver kind of panicked and swerved off the road. I went airborne in the vehicle and as we came out of the ditch, I landed and just compressed my spine. What they did is it's called a posterior lumbar inner body fusion. They go in through your back and they take the two discs out and then they put six screws and two rods in my back uh, to stabilize it. And then they took allograft bone, which is cadaver bone, and put it in between those spaces. I remember coming out of sedation and I'm looking down at my, my surgeons down there and they were talking to me and there was probably five or six other doctors at, at the end of my bed and they were all talking and so I picked my head up and I looked down and my legs weren't moving. I was trying to wiggle my feet and they weren't moving and they were poking me upon the whole length of my body with needles to see if I had any sensation. And I remember I looked over at my dad and my, my dad and my daughter were in the room and I, I said, I'm paralyzed dad. And he's like, I know, son, it'll be all right. My surgeon was really good. He said, you know, we don't, we don't have the ability to give him the therapy he needs. So he pushed and got the advocate to, to okay sending me to a civilian hospital. I checked in there. They started me off real slow. I was in a wheelchair when I first got there, and then they gradually um, taught me how to use a walker. For me, that was a turning point where I made the conscious decision that I wasn't going to let my injury beat me. Just getting ready to pack for the National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic. This is some of the gear that I'm taking up to the sports clinic. The helmet that I'm going to wear, camera, gloves, socks. I'm a little nervous just because um, I haven't been able to ski since my disability and I don't know how that's going to affect me, so um, I guess we'll find out. I've been skiing since I was a child. You know, being a Colorado native, it's kind of what we do. Ready to go. This is the camera guy that's gonna follow me down the hill. Hopefully he doesn't fall because I'm gonna leave him in the dust. <laughs> I was pretty apprehensive going into Tuesday afternoon, wondering if I was gonna be able to ski at the same level that I was at before my injury. And so I was I was pretty anxious. Alright. It feels a lot different. It's, it's definitely a lot different. Um, not being able to feel your, your lower legs, it's kind of hard to feel your edges. Um, I don't know how to describe it other than I, I, I think I used to use my feet a lot when I skied to feel the angle of my, of my ski and, and I could feel it in my boot. If my foot's pressing against the side of my boot, I know I'm at the right angle, but can't feel that anymore. Nice. There's two coaches on there that you know they coach at the elite level for the national Paralympic team. 
So I got some really good pointers from them, and, and what an honor. You know, I mean, if I don't race at the elite level, I think I'd like to do some um, lower division races just to see how it, how it is. So now you know that you can, and so you're going to do it more often, I'm sure, right? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, this season's over, but, uh, you know, I'm going to try to talk to those guys from the Winter Park Disabled Program and see if I can do, do some more stuff there. If nothing else, just go up and volunteer to instruct, whether I can repay them personally or whether I can repay, repay someone else's. That's something I want to do. There's so many doors that have opened up for me that I feel feel a lot better about myself and where I'm going. And this is going to end up being a life changing experience for me. Joining us now via webcam is medically retired Marine Sergeant John Lujan. John, thanks for being a part of the show and welcome to In Their Boots. No problem, thank you. What is your favorite part about being on the slopes? And can you talk about the retreat and how that brought it back into your life? Um, well, the favorite part about being up there is just uh, the speed, I guess. You know, it's the freedom of being able to move fast again. And uh, as far as as far as the retreat, it was it was amazing. You know, I was surrounded by 480 of the country's heroes. You said when you're up there, it's the, the speed and, and the adrenaline that it brings back to you. Um, but what did it mean to you that weekend? And like you said, who were you surrounded by? Well, for me, it was the first time I'd been on ski since my injury. So, you know, for me, it was a huge stepping stone towards my future recovery. Um, and just being surrounded by it, all the way from World War II vets all the way through the current conflict was pretty amazing. Now, how did that, how did that weekend change your perspective um, on your injury and how it's changed your life? Well, it changed a couple of things. First of all, it made me realize that I need to surround myself more with, with veterans, guys like me, and especially injured vets. Um, but it also it gave me some freedom back. What do you need in your life to continue this sport? And is there anything our viewers can do um, to help along with, with veterans like yourself? I think there's a couple of things you know, that, I, that I need, or if people are feeling generous, they can make a contribution uh, on my behalf to the competition center at the National Sports Center for the Disabled. Um, and I've already gotten a little help from a, a local company called Christie Sports here. They've been kind enough to sponsor all my ski equipment for this season. Well, John, thank you for your uh, humility and the inspiration that your story offered here today. Um, I want to wish you happy Veterans Day and a happy belated Marine Corps birthday, 233rd. Um, you too, Semper Fi. <laughs> Semper Fi. Thanks for being a part of the show today, John. Keep it up. We'll be looking for you in the Olympics. Thank you very much.